Hi, I'm Bob Pruitt, and uh, I'm very happy to be here, and thank you to the Actor Museum for having me here. Um, I live in New York City, and I've been working as a rock roll photographer since 1965. And I didn't just uh, visit the rock roll lifestyle as a journalist. I, I live this life, and I enjoy it. I've worked with a lot of powerful artists who've uh, inspired the world, and I've helped to promote their image. It's important for me, to me to relate the passion and the feeling of what's going on, and my path has been through rock and roll. Photography was my, mom, was my mom's hobby, and she taught me to develop and print my own pictures. I took an immediate liking to photography, and when I was eight years old, my parents gave me my first camera, a Brownie Hawkeye. My photo influences include Man Ray for making art with photography, Henry Cartier Bresson for catching the decisive moment, and Arthur Fellick, known as Ouija, for always being in the right place at the right time. I always wanted to sell my photos as art, and not just be published as news. My motto has always been artist gladi pecunica, or art for the sake of money. My first album cover was for Tina Turner in 1971, and this led to many introductions and new contacts. I had been using my dad's an ultra camera, but I finally got a good night count. The first night I had it, I went to Master Square Garden to photograph a rock and roll revival show. I was standing on the seat trying to get a better a shot of Chuck Berry kissing his guitar when a guard started yelling at me to get off the seat. He literally lifted me up. Before he dropped me in the aisle, I got this shot. Then <laughs> <laughs> a publicist hired me to photograph a new piano player from England who was just starting a solo career, Elton John. Elton liked my photos and had me photograph his next several trips to New York. The first rock concert I had seen was the Rolling Stones at the Academy of Music in New York in 1965. It was the most exciting show I ever experienced. I was an immediate fan, and I have been ever since. A lot of the bands I worked with were not famous when I met them, and I was able to record their early moments. I got to know their moments when they couldn't even afford guitar cases. And I worked with a lot of groups who were considered dangerous. The New York Dolls frightened people because they pushed the accepted boundaries. They dolled themselves up, not as uh, transvestites, but as beautiful men looking for a kiss. When asked if they were bisexual, the leader, David Johansson, answered, No, we're trisexual. We'll try anything. <laughs> but I worked with many big name bands too. Led Zeppelin had their own tour playing when I met them. Lisa Robinson called me one day and said we were going to Pittsburgh with Led Zeppelin. When I got to the airport, Robert Plant asked me to take a picture of the band with their plane. This photo is on the first roll of film I took of them, but it's one of the most well known photos of Led Zeppelin. I enjoy being from New York, and I used to wear a shirt like this all the time. I, I got several of them whenever I'd see guys who sold them on the street, on the sidewalk in, in Times Square. I used to give them to my friends, and I gave them on to John Lennon. Now, the President of the United States, Richard Nixon, wanted John Lennon deported. And what was his crime? He dared to speak of peace in a time of war. I believe in the ideas of John and Yoko, and one of the main reasons I wanted to help them was that I felt their message of peace and love was so important. I wanted to take a photo of John in front of the Statue of Liberty to dramatize his case. The statue being a symbol of welcome to our country whose government was determined to throw him out. I was that John agreed with me to take the picture, but surprised that after we'd done it, not that many news outlets published it, being afraid to be involved with John's political case. After he died in 1980, the picture became much more popular. And I think this is because people relate to John Lennon as a symbol of personal freedom, similar to the Statue of Liberty. And John Lennon had taken some time off to be with his son, Sean. When Sean was only a month old, John called me and asked me to come and take some photos to send to his family. He seemed happier than I had ever seen him. He stayed away from the public life for the next five years after that. And there's a fear factor involved with being a free agent. And while I like to think I'm not afraid of anything, personally, I worry about everything. I worry about getting out of bed in the morning. I worry about standing up because I might fall down. I worry about every decision I have to make. But I don't let it stop me. I live in fear, but I'm not scared. Fear is the energy that keeps me going. Winston Churchill said that when you're going through hell, you should keep going. I crave peace and quiet, but I thrive in chaos.